you don't build the team, you build the building. Mm. And then the team comes, it's like, bro, they built the stadium, and then the f***ing basketball team came and started playing there. Like, you just build the building first, and all the right people gonna come, all the staff, everybody you gotta hire. Like, you can't focus on building the team, build your product. Mm. Once they see the product they love, they gonna, everybody wanna they come block. be a part of it. Right, mm. that, that comes with it. Like, a team is just something that comes with building something great, naturally. <laughs> Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. First of all, introduction was popping, everybody. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Um, shit, I stopped counting episodes, but I'm going to recount when I get to 52. So if, you, if, if, if you're my audience and I fuck with you, you fuck with me, let you know we're going to... How many weeks in a year? 52 or 54? Yeah, 52. 52. So when you see the numbers start popping up, it's because I hit a year consistently with this show. Come on. If you know, you know we probably did 100, 100 different times. Before. Come on. Special guest is in the building. Oh, my God. La Russell is here. Yeah. Is it La Russell or L.A. Russell? It's La Russell, for sure. I heard you say L.A. Russell. Come on. You know when I'm in L.A., I'm L.A. Russell. Okay. Okay. La Russell is in the building. Um, North Vallejo. Yeah. Ooh, Vallejo in the building. Hey. I was nervous to meet you. Why? Because this is the interview that I was excited about. Come on. You know, it's easier to... You're not excited about all your interviews? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is business. Come on. This is business. Come um, on. Sometimes I'm like, you know, oh, man. But I'm not going to lie. Sometimes those interviews be the ones that be great. Right. The ones I'm sleeping on, just being real. But this one... <sighs> yeah. You know, so I'm mad I did this. I didn't know it was going to turn like this. So my new tactic is when I'm DM pe DMing people now, I delete my old messages because I don't want it to seem like I'm a pest for real. <laughs> so it just look it just look good. So I had delete I had deleted my older messages when I did when I DM'd you again. Huh. So you ain't see them. But I've been DM'd you like mad times. Like, yeah. Been, yeah, I've been DM'd. Hey, you got through. <laughs> you got through. <laughs> Come on, shout out consistency nah, and persistence. For, for sure. Yeah. What's, like what's good, man? Come on. Hey, I, let's say you, you 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 ease the fear. Me and you, you you definitely dope. I didn't know if you was gonna be that like the same person in person. Fire. Fire. Come on. <laughs> How you feeling? That would bring you to the Atlanta, man. Man, lovely, man. We out here working. We making content. We doing interviews, PR. We just grinding. We got Revolt while we out here. We doing Revolt Summit on Sunday. That's gonna be fire. You a part of that? Or you yeah, yeah. We got a panel. That's hard. What, right. Uh, Saturday. Uh, Sunday. Future Sunday. Independence panel. Okay, so I might come Sunday. I got one ticket, so I was going to come on Saturday. But I might just fuck with you. Saturday got some fire, too. But, yeah, Sunday, we're yeah, we going to get right. On come on. Fuck it. Damn, so you, you, you came down Atlanta for the panel. Yep. What made you? You had you made a couple stops. You went to D.C.? Yeah, we was in D.C. We had a show out there at Georgetown, a speaking engagement, like an interview, little panel, and then we did a performance. So we spent some time out there with the locals doing some interviews and mm -hmm. shit, getting some content. Everywhere we go, we just I'm working. Sorry. That's hard. Yo, can you do me a favor? I'm sorry, bro. Can you cut that light? Is that light not cut on? Is it plugged up? I'm just, I'm just like tedious. I see everything. Oh. This right here is under his, it's under his, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's on his side. Oh, oh yeah. no, it's on, it's on his I side. See, I got you, I got you. Is it, is it like it wasn't, it wasn't plugged in? All right, bad, bad. See, gotcha. I'm just, my bad, bro. I just, yeah. Come on. Kind of like you, That's bro. That's how it go. Yeah. <laughs> you got to pay attention to everything in this motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, so when you do those things, um, the people that hire you for the panels or whatever, are they paying for the flights or that's just all you Definitely, do? man. Early on, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't fully grasp the business, so I used to, like, pay my own way and just get my, you know, payment for the performance. But now, yeah, we make sure all that's incorporated. You can't really say you ain't grasp with business because you was we was just working. We making it work. Yeah, make it work. right. Definitely. But you know, as you grow, you learn different shit, and it's like, okay, we need to include that in because yeah. sometimes that it, sometimes it ain't worth it if you got to spend all your money on flights and hotels. Tell me one time that the money might not have looked worth it, but making that trip 
actually man, I went to uh in 2019. I had quit my job and I got I literally got a call probably a week later uh to go shoot at Vivo in New York. And I was like, bro, I was on my last bit of cash. I had some some four hundred one k bread and, and you know some some uh some tax money. And I was like, fuck, I'm finna go. And I took like five of the homies. And uh, you feel me? It wasn't even paid. It was just an opportunity to get some content. But that shit was super worth it because that trip is actually the trip that made me come back home and be like, I could do this shit myself. Mm-hmm. Like I could start my own production team and we can make our own content. So that was one of the ones where it's like. Monetarily, we didn't gain, but we gained in every other way. That's hard. Yeah. That's fire. How many times you got to convince yourself that, bro, it's worth it, man? Like, I might, don't, don't be lazy. Don't be in your own way. Just get it done. You still got to do that to this day or not? Nah, not often. Like, you know, the things that's worth it now, like, they, they, is it's usually prominent and hyper present. Like, it's not something that's really debatable. It's like, this, mm-hmm. this is clear. This is a good move. You know, at this point, we know which ones is the good moves and which ones is like, if we go, it might be cool. If not, it'll be all right. <laughs> Bro, there's so many places to go here. Like, right. You, you just, just bear with me. Because uh, I said, like I said, I was so excited to do this interview. And um, and I was scared to meet you for a second. Because I'm like, man. If Which is guy, wild. I'm the most normal nigga out of all the. Nah, but you know, <laughs> they say that. On the, everybody is. Right. Normal, right? <laughs> you meet them and it's like, right. Bro, you are really just faking for an image so people can like you. Right. So I actually was scared. I, um, But having said that and thinking about that. Is it anybody that like you really fuck with and you probably you really love that story and you met and it was like that's they they really not who I thought it was? Yeah. A name I'm not gonna disclose, but uh not man, yet. man, yeah, definitely. I mean the industry is full of those though, but it's also like it was partially my fault for having like an expectation mm-hmm. or a perception of somebody that didn't they never told me to expect nothing from them you feel me so it was on my own i was mad that i met someone and they wasn't who i thought they was versus who they actually was you feel me so that wasn't even on them isn't that crazy how we even let's let's rewind right got it (laughs) you're in that position where people got an expectation of who you might be right right isn't that kind of unfair it's like like we look at Shit, he's a superstar. I can say his name. We look at like people like Fab, right? And then we see the situations that he in, and it's like, oh my God, he let me down. When he's like, bro, why is he letting you down? You don't even know this, right? Man. <laughs> right? You got an expectation of somebody exactly. that you and you never should. And and that shit taught me that. Like it was very humbling. Like, bro, just accept niggas. That's whatever they give you. That's who they are. You feel me? You that's either right. accept what they give or just walk. So you say you want to disclose their name. Do you hold on to those people who might be been weird to you? And when you get to like a certain level you will explain all your experiences and the names that come with it was like I was yeah man i'm actually writing a book right now um this is like my third book that's coming out where i kind of uh just you go into detail on about a lot of a lot of things you feel me oh that's the petty ass what, what's your son uh, Libra. Oh, that's that's a different type of petty. Like, I- nah, man, it's not even petty. It's not even on a judgment tip. It's just on a, you know, the title of that chapter is opinion, not fact, just mm-hmm. based on observation. You feel me? It's not even on no petty shit. It's just on a. This is what I observed. You feel me? During during my experience. And that's good. I, I say petty jokingly, but like, nah, I, I feel like we. Oh, I think I seen a meme or something. Are you crazy if you don't think I got a list of names? That like, <laughs> they ain't motivate me, and that, like I ain't dwelling on it. But I bet you, when I get to a certain, you level, remember, when I right, answer, right? And somebody asks me a question, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember one time. That, yeah. Definitely. You sure. definitely I mean those things mold you. Like you remember the people who who, who faked out and, and who, who played funny like just naturally. Always. And and that shit always spin, you feel me? The globe always spin around. The tables always turn. Yeah. Yo, speaking of that, right? One thing that's um impressive about you and who you you you, you associate yourself with is this team. You like you can't really build what you got. Right. right, like that shit. That's family. These people come and I just split the pie because they there. Yeah. Talk to me about how hard people always say you gotta have a team, right? And it's cool to say like I did this myself. That sounds cool until you understand that millionaires and billionaires they became right that <laughs> a team. That's right. Certain. Talk to me about how hard it was to get that right group of people that can really see a vision and start pushing it. Man, um, it wasn't necessarily hard to get the right people because, like, they, that just comes naturally. Like, if you're doing the right things, the right things start to happen around you. Like, uh, finding Tieta, like, she helps me with biz out, social media, just everything that we do in terms of innovation and ideas. It wasn't hard to find her. I just had to be the person that, you know, attracts those type of people. Uh, 
now like keeping you know the right the right space go. around you gets a little difficult because everybody got different work ethics and shit but with me it's just like um I'm learning now to not be attached to people in their roles. It's feel me. Some people are here for a specific amount of time and, and that's it. You got to let go of that shit. You learning to like, to, to not be attached, but come on, be real. Yeah. I mean, it's rough. It it's a, of, of course, of course it's blow, especially when people don't have the same work ethic as you, because you like, you want to make it with certain people and it's like, bro, why you ain't going as hard as I'm going? You feel me? But that's another thing with expectation. You expecting somebody to deliver something that you would do. Them niggas ain't you. Mm. You talk about, cause I want to stay here. We got to We got to stay here. I'm sorry. Cause I'm going through this. It's, you talk about how the, the, how people act when the seed is first sown to when that motherfucker start growing. Right. right? Everybody want to come around when they see some shit lit. It's like, right. hey, can I be a part of it? Like, right. You talk about that, right? And how when, when you growing that seed, nobody really cares. Everybody want to get paid. You're not saying we shouldn't pay nobody, but it's like, it's hard. Nigga, I barely get paid. I don't right. Know I'm still <laughs> right. working and doing this. Right. Talk to me about that, though. Like, just, just understanding how being successful is going to bring people around it, and, and sometimes you got to do it by yourself when you you're not as lit as people deem or whatever. man you really have to like i'm i'm a nigga who's always willing to do everything by myself if i have to mm. like i'm not gonna rely on you i'm not gonna wait on you if you're gonna help me great if you're not i'm gonna still get it done so me having that i was able to cultivate a different group around me because everybody knew nigga if you're not here it's still gonna happen so you know you would much rather want to be a part and i'm just somebody who's always if you help me and take care of me, I'm going to take care of you naturally. Like you, you, I'm, I'm going to look out naturally. Before you go, how do you convey that to the team member who just come on, right? Let's say it's your first team and they just came on, they helped me you. And they're like, bro, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a look out for you. But you got it. Like you probably don't have it right now. But how do you convey I don't, that to I them? don't think you convey it through conversation, more so demonstration. Like some of the people when they first start coming around me to help, like say videographers, whatever, it's like if they gotta come down, I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna shoot you gas. I'm okay. I'm finna cash app you for this. That's I'm a, I'm gonna look you know, just doing the things that you can do. You feel me? You do it through demonstration. Cause like anybody can say some shit, but when you actually send in and a nigga see, oh man, he paid for the food for everybody to eat, oh he gave me gas to go they they respect that and you know that if a nigga giving you gas money now you know when he get up i mean you feel not me everybody that's a fact i love that but i just feel like people have this associate this attachment to money so much it's like granted i'm, I'm not i'm not encouraging nobody not to get paid because i would want to get paid for sure but i'm saying when you're trying to build a team how do you even differentiate the ones that just trying to get paid versus the ones that really believe in your what you got going on for real? I mean, they fall out naturally. Like, the niggas who want to get paid naturally fall out when they not getting paid. Mm. And the people who want to be around just naturally be around through all that shit until that money comes, you feel me? Like, you never have to worry about it. Because, yes. like, you know, any nigga who's starving, if it ain't no food there, they're going to leave. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. And, and you're going into the work ethic. You know, I was... I was building my team like when I was in ba when I was in Baltimore it took me maybe two years to get a solid team mm. and I understood I appreciated it when I got it because I'm like yeah. man I was trying to get this so bad and I could I, I like you said I wasn't able to build that huh. they literally came like I, right? I wasn't able to build that and I come to Atlanta and I'm like I'm trying to do the same thing and it's like bro it's hard and then my man, like, bro, people got to understand that you the prize, you the prize, you the prize. But I can't convince nobody that. Bro, and I'm not you, don't, to. you don't build the team, you build the building. Mm. And then the team comes, it's like, bro, they built the stadium. And then the fucking basketball team came and started playing there. Like, you just build the building first and all the right people going to come, all the staff, everybody you got to hire. Like, you can't focus on building the team, build your product. Mm. Once niggas see the product they love, they gonna everybody want to come fly. be a part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that comes with it. Like, a team is just something that comes with building something great, naturally. I fuck with that. Tell me about those times where before you had the team, and like you said, I would do everything by myself. Yeah. Man, bro, I was mixing, mastering, recording. I come out the booth, hit record, run in. My cameras, I go behind the camera, hit record, get in front, get in my seat, do my shit. Like everything everything i used to make album covers for artists around like making beats i, I did every bro i'm not gonna wait mm. <laughs> you're gonna wait you're a dead man yeah, right you feel me you done mm. 
But how was you feeling in those moments? I try to get like vulnerable on my show to show the, the, the purpose of my show is what makes you human, right? Mm-hmm. There's so many people that look up to you and inspire be, to be you or inspired by you, right? And I feel like they look at you, but they don't understand that, bro. Like you, it's something that you're doing that they're doing or they're going through as well. Right, right for certain. So those times when you was doing it, was it times where like you you record and the shit probably be blurry and it's like fuck you did all this work and it still don't come out how you wanted it to come out. Right. Come out those times. Yeah, definitely. But that shit comes with it. Mm-hmm. That shit comes with it. I mean, you could worry about the last shot that you missed, or you could shoot and make the next one. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like. That shit just naturally comes with it. Trial and error comes with everything you do, bro. You might fuck up a lot of shit before you make something great. That's hard. And I, as easy as it flows, right, it, it's so much harder to deal with because you got to deal with learn, being able to even learn from it, to move forward from a fuck up, to even be like, you know what? Thank it's you. Okay. You got to say thank you. Hey, man, we just had a moment the other night, man. We was outside and, uh, yo, what's popping? This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices. We just, me and Tote was talking and it was like, we had a realization of like everything that we've gone through and experienced and had to deal with that we thought was like traumatic or just a nigga doing something to us was opposite. They was doing something for us, Mm -hmm. but we say everything else. We say, fuck you, fuck that. But we never say thank you. Like, bro, if shit didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have been able to write a dollar to the rich or a K story or it all makes sense. when I wouldn't have been able to write none of that. So for me now, it's like, thank you. You feel me? I thought you did something to me, but you really did something for me. Thank you. That's and shit. I think you said it. And what was it? The LA Leaker shit? When the elevator broke, we still came up. We like, still came up, bro. What 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 else you going to do? You going to sit in there and wait? Or you going <laughs> to walk your ass up? As no simple kidding. as that. Sheesh, bro. Yo, tell me about... Damn, it's so much to talk about, bro. <laughs> it is so much, bro. Like, so... Talking about percentages, right? Because you... You, you big on like Come on Yeah How do you gauge that Cause I'm learning my damn self Cause like I always be like Yo 10% I, Then I thought I said that one day I'm like yo That's a lot compared Like in the grand scheme of things uh-huh. How do you weigh the percentages And how you You get um, that Sometimes It depends on the contribution Uh, mm-hmm. Honestly There is no There is no right or wrong to it You gotta think We came from an industry Where niggas wasn't splitting no pie So if you get any amount of pie You should be hyper grateful mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. And with my team, like, no one complains. We understand that we have to divvy this up and some pie is better than no pie. But I really gauge it by role and contribution. How much work did you do? You shouldn't expect 50 percent of something you only did one percent of the work on ever. But what is right, right, right there, right? Because people do have those that we talk about expectations, right? Mm. And not even expectations. They have that. Um, It's like, yeah, it's an expectation, right? What happened is they, they do it. And they're like, man, I think I deserve this. I think I deserve that. Are you giving the percentage based on the project or the entirety of what you got? It depends on what we're working. So say like uh, we shoot a live performance session, right, with an artist and a producer. 50% of that we give to the artist and producer. They both take 25 each. I feel like 50, 50% is adequate because that's half of what we created. Mm-hmm. You did half of what we created. You just came in and performed your art. That's worthy. The other half goes to the entire production team, whoever shot on the cameras, who did the editing, who did the lyrics, whoever did the audio, because this whole thing wouldn't even exist if we wasn't here. So the second half should go to the people that help create it. Any nigga who has an issue with that, we just don't do business with. I'll give you the whole hundred percent, but you just burned your bridge. We never have to work again. You can have a hundred of one thing, but you never going to do no more work. Right. And, and like I say, in the grand scheme of things, like no one should ever have a problem splitting pie with somebody that helped bake it. If a nigga upset with you because you helped them bake a pie and they don't want to split it a certain way. Just walk. You feel me? You don't even want... That's not even a discussion or argument to have. Mm. Let them have it. Get that nigga the whole pie and go make some more somewhere else. You feel me? How did you learn? Like, where did you learn that from? How did you learn that? When did you learn that? 
Man, I initially got the whole split system came to me. I had watched an interview by uh, Ty Bison, which is Brent Fire's manager, who I end up meeting later in life. He's like a mentor to me. But I had seen that early and he was talking about splits and how he give it to the producers and engineers. And I was like, man, bro, that's smart. That makes sense. Like, why wouldn't you? And I just feel like it incentivizes your team when niggas know that they get an equity in something that they build in. They work harder. We all want to do a great job. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But you got people doing work and they get, man, I used to work for a company. I worked in aerospace and I came in on production when I came in, like they were doing just like old practices that were taking forever to get product out. I came and read like all the standards and I found out that there was more efficient ways, bro. We was moving out millions of shit after that. They ain't give me nothing. You feel me? But a pat on the A, bro. Like, I literally changed. Till this day, they're still using systems that I help innovate and change. I ain't getting no percent of that shit. But that made me realize, like, my value. Like, damn, bro. You feel me? You you deserve to have some pie of the things you work in. Anything you help bake, you deserve to eat, too. Mm, no, facts. I like that. It's, it's, it's funny because we was having a conversation, small conversation off air or whatever. And it was kind of like, <laughs> you see yeah. the Spider-Man meme it was like, Come on, but it, it tell them. Like, <laughs> to, like, to be with somebody that, that that's like minded is like that. Get it? Cause so many people don't get it. Right. And it, it, it's frustrating when you're in a room and it's like, bro, it's like all you gotta do is it's sometimes you be saying like, all you gotta do is get it. But it ain't that easy because niggas, God, I feel like God is kind of like the eyes, right? People don't see what you see because God ain't giving the same eyes as you. Right. Right. So like they never, you can't expect people to see what you see. No. You can't, you can't see the vision, and they say, um. If you have a vision, it's kind of like a preview, right? Like the, mm. before every movie come out, they, they have a preview of the movie. So right. they tell you that it's coming out. But what happens is when you see the preview of your movie, you're the only one that see it. So mm -hmm. it hurts trying to explain to somebody a movie that they ain't see the preview to. Right. And that'd be frustrating. And that's the thing. Demonstration speaks louder than conversation. Mm. Some shit you don't have to say you have to do. Mm. But we be trying to explain it. Bro, I'm not finna explain. <laughs> nigga, show me. And I'm somebody, you know, JJ, everybody in this room will tell you, like, you can come to me with an idea, and I'm just like, what? show me. Like, I, I'm not on go until I see it, mm -hmm. because everything else is just conversation. Like, I need to see it. I think I'm the same way. That's why I, I, I like, I be, I don't want to say stench with mine, because it's like, bro, if you want to add contribution, because I built everything for you. Literally, like, I... I we could go for days of what I what I did, right? I provided everything for you. All you gotta do is come in and put some effort in, and we can watch this this thing grow. Right. What, what happens is people wanna be a coach. I told I remember I tell companies to this day. I did a photo shoot with a uh, ballet, right? And I'm like on my caption, I was like, um, what the fuck did I say? Let's let's go to it. what did I say? Cause I, I remember saying this, and people thought it was cocky. And I'm like, nah, it ain't cocky. I just I'm not this. I'm not the type of person that's gonna be okay with anything, right? So what the, the caption was, I said, um, I never been a glad to be here type of person. I'm always, I'm, I'm more so of a person that's gonna be like, I'm gonna show you why I belong here. Right. And I always kept that mentality. If I go in the company, if the company was big, it was never like, oh my god, thank you so much. Is what took you so long? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's with all due respect. Right. Let me show you why you should have been hopped on this bandwagon right you you missed it for years but it's okay because you got me now right let me just show you right so it's kind of like that like if you ain't showing me then right right i mean it ain't like niggas could talk forever but it's like the people who everybody in history that we learn about in school or just through anything are the people who did something we don't learn about the niggas who talked about doing something <laughs> We don't even know who them niggas are. <laughs> like, we <laughs> learned about the niggas who did something, bro. They don't talk about the nigga who thought about making a cell phone. They talk about Steve Jobs, the nigga who made a cell phone. No cap. You feel me? Like that. That's how this shit worked. That's how this whole life worked. Let me. I'm gonna shift gears for a second, right? You came from a um, two parent back, uh, two parent home. Yeah. Right. And I think that's so special. <laughs> weirdly, because in today's society, everybody want to celebrate a struggle. Like everybody want the struggle, like, and it's like, nigga, I had the struggle. I don't want that shit. Right. <laughs> Not saying you ain't struggle, but I like when, when I say equating with like coming up from like just your moms mm -hmm. and all the shit that that comes with. You right. know what I'm saying? It's a lot of pain there. But right. everybody want to be like, bro, I had to get it on my own. I ain't had nobody to show me what. <laughs> you a fool, and it shows. Right. You <laughs> but you kind of said that, right? And because 
I'm doing good. I came from my parents' house, so I don't feel bad at you guys. But I say to say, you was like, you know, it shows in people's lives. Through the Definitely. The people that come up with, like, one-parent homes. And, again, it's not a bad thing. But I was curious, because I want to learn about some things that I might miss when I look in the mirror. You feel me? What are some of the inconsistencies that you've seen from the people around you that was raised from that one-parent household? Man, a lot of my uh, homies grew up in one-parent households. And um, it's usually, like... Uh, and and even with me in a two parent household, you know, that lack thereof could always exist, whether that's like lack of attention, especially with one parent households. There's like a heavy lack of attention, like niggas want to be seen a lot. You end up growing up and doing shit because you want to be seen because yeah. like your mom always worked. Or your daddy always, nobody was there to watch. So you're doing a lot. I mean, like you got a pocket. Like, you feel me? Like pocket. that's like deeply rooted shit that we don't understand. You all, you, you feel me? You want to be seen that lack of attention. Uh lack of affection like you feel me there's a there's a there's a lot to come with both it's not even a one parent or a two parent thing you feel me like that's just it depends on what parents was there what you got some people got one parent households but they got nurtured far more than if you had two it just depends on who's in the house it's not even about the amount of people in the house it's about who's in the house that's why I said you gotta be careful because hopefully my girl don't watch it. She might see because I be right. She finna get. I told you you need to go to therapy, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about so you, but you a pops now. Yep. Right. Can we? I've been for a decade. Can we get deep? Yeah, go for it. Come on. All right. So I'm a stepfather. So I've been for like five years now. Not not a decade. Half a decade. Half a decade. Um. Isn't it crazy? I don't know if you've seen this yet. But isn't it scary almost that like you can do your best as being a parent and your kid can still make whatever decision they want to make? Yeah. It could be like it's like you could do everything in your power for them not to go down a, a certain way and they still go down that, that, that route. Yeah, I mean, but it's, bruh, you have no, once you plant a seed, you don't get to decide what type of tree grows from it. But a lot of people plant a seed and they like, I want you to be an apple tree, but it's like, but your kid might be a lemon tree. So you got to learn how to nurture it for what it is. But a lot of parents want to like hang on and you need to be this way and this way. And that's just not how that shit work. And a lot of parents just lead by like words, like kids don't, kids don't do what you say. They do what you do. Like, bro, it's like parents who tell their kids don't curse, but they curse around the house all day. Like, bro, what you think going to happen? <laughs> And that ain't it. real, you feel me? Because no one in the world do as you say. Everybody do as you do. Everything we do, you did a podcast because you seen a nigga do a podcast. Mm -hmm. Not because you heard a nigga say, go do a podcast. It's not how it works. No, it's not. <laughs> you know, it's crazy because I always try to have this conversation with um, leaders. And what I mean by that is, you know, how how can we, if, if that's the case, right? Just playing devil's advocate. If it's always like, People are not going to do what you they want. They're going to do as you do. Mm. But if I came up and I learned the hard way, and I don't want you to learn the hard way, so I've been there, I've done that, and I'm just trying to give you a message so you don't have to go through what I went through. Because a fool, only a fool, got to learn through their own mistakes. You understand? Know right. Learn through somebody else's mistakes. <laughs> right. So if I'm trying to tell you, hey, I sold drugs, I went to jail, I did this, I made bad decisions, don't do it, right? But it's like you ain't do that. It's kind of mm. like hypocr hypocrisy at, at a point, right? Like, how do you um, differentiate, differentiate? Like I say, it's one thing to tell a nigga not to sell drugs, and then it's another thing to build things around them to where they don't have to sell drugs. Mm. You know, Andre 3000 has a line, and he says, uh, I'd be a fool to tell them to stop slanging and not give them an alternative. You feel me? Like, like you not you you could tell a nigga anything, but you're not giving them alternative things to do, or you're not cultivating them in another way to where they would choose something else. So, it it, it just comes back down to the fact that you're saying something, but mm -hmm. that that's one thing, but it, it takes action. You feel me? Okay, I like that. In your household, you spoke about how you wasn't just <clears throat> you wasn't just exposed to artists from the West Coast, but you was exposed to artists from the East Coast as well. For sure. Who was your favorite East Coast artist? Probably coming up. Um, coming up, I'd say Nas, just because he had like a child. Like I know I can't. You okay. feel me? Like all the artists that had one of those was like that's Wait, just who you, you know. Ninety four. Okay, okay, okay. All right. How old are you? I was born in ninety one. I wasn't. But so yeah, yeah. When I just when I hear, I know I can. I be like, 
Okay. Right, you okay. feel me? But that was like the you know it's got the kids in it, so it's like okay. And then Biggie, you feel me? But I didn't really, I didn't even really have a a favorite. Like I was just consumed in so much music. Then I just enjoyed everything. You feel me? My pops played a lot of music. My mom played a lot of music. So I I wasn't even really picking favorites. It was just consumption. Do you remember the first time you heard? Uh, East Coast song was it different for you or you heard it so much that it always like just what was your normal yeah, nah, it was always and everything was always mixed with us okay. like I always had like a melting pot of music okay so how did you deal with when you are with your friends and they only listening to West Coast music right like yeah. was it was what you looked at as weird when you were trying to put on more with the East Coast music because it always been like a separation of East Coast West Coast when it kind of music I feel like oh not in the bay we didn't we never had to deal with that nah in the bay it was like especially when i was growing up like everybody in the bay listened to everything our radio station played everything so it was never um never i've never had an east coast west coast conflicting conversation with a friend ever in life Wow. i've never had to you feel me like we didn't we we was completely separate from it <laughs> i might have made a terrible fucking analogy right <laughs> <laughs> you know what it remind me of bro what this is crazy it reminds me of like our country, and I'm gonna tell you why. I feel like all other countries in the world probably learn about all other countries in the world, but us, we only consume with the United States. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like in in hmm. on, on the East Coast, I feel like when I hear when I first heard E40, I'm like, bro, this is weird. I, Interesting. It wasn't, it wasn't normal. Right. But I, but I hear so many so many times in hip hop how New York downplay. Uh, yeah, West Coast like, rap and shit. You know, right. They don't yep. play West yep. Coast. Like they, it's like y'all trying to earn y'all keep one. In reality, when y'all hearing it, everything is just everything. We just embrace everything. You feel me? Because it's just different sounds. Like, yeah, we didn't. We never had that issue. We never had. When I heard Jay Z, it was just like hearing regular music. I never thought, like, man, this nigga from the East, this shit different. Like, nah, we embrace everything. Yeah, that's crazy. Even the South, you know, like, it's funny, you know, what was that? Like, the Source Awards when Outkast won and it was like, the South got something to say. Like, that was some shit that I never understand. It was like, why wouldn't y'all fuck with Outkast? They tight. You feel me? That don't make no sense. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> right? That's crazy. So, what about, all right, so I wanted to ask you this because I don't know. E40, he's from the Bay Area, right? Yep, he's from Vallejo. Vallejo. What, from your perspective, this is an ignorant question, but I don't know. Come on. Okay. Why, what's so special about E40? Tell, if you had to enlighten somebody, tell me what's so special. E40 is special because he's special. Like, he's unique. You've never heard no one like E40. We live in a in a society where everybody raps like each other. Even back then, like East Coast rap, everybody was using the same beat, same flows. Niggas sounded the same till this day. When you listen to shit on the radio, everything sound the same. You ain't never heard a nigga sound like E40 ever. And I feel like just having uniqueness and the game that he gives, like, bro, he really gives game on independence and everything through records. Like, if you don't understand it, you're just not receptive. But to be unique in this game is a hyper plus for me because everything everybody the same everything is similar you feel me we got enough of the same shit e40 ain't never gonna give you something somebody else gave you mm, that makes sense so now you say you it was normal for you to hear everything but you can't you couldn't be blind to how much he opened the door for west coast though e40 specifically the bay area i'm you had to see that influence though right or was you you don't understand it? you don't think about it as a youngin because like when forty kicked like forty really kicked the door open uh when he started fucking with like Lil John and they just snap and he came over here to the A and shit but as a kid you don't nigga we just snap nigga we this it <laughs> we not we not even thinking about that you feel me so later on in life as I grew and I became an indie artist and I had to tread these waters it's like damn forty did open some doors because now people when I say Vallejo they like oh forty. Okay. Right. So now is it's a different state because it's like, yeah, people know what I'm talking about. So now they accept it. It's already nostalgia because they know 40 did it. They know 40s from there. They know too short. They know Mac Dre. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's different. But back then, it was just dancing. Damn. <laughs> so it's crazy because I guess it's kind of similar. Right. When I was young, I was still ignorant and, and, and youthful. And I'm like, I don't like this music. Right. But when I, as I got older, I started to respect it. And understand did you not like it just because it was different? Of course, or you th we, do we do we ever like different? Right. Our, 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 our country again. Right. When we see something different 
our natural human instinct is right. to reject it. Right? right. So, like, as a kid, I don't even understand that, right? So, my, I'm just doing <laughs> what I'm doing as a human. Right. Like, I hate this shit. This shit is terrible. Give me some 50 cents or some shit. Wow. Right? That's what I was as a kid. But as I got older... Even though it it wasn't my favorite, I started to respect it. At See, least. but was that reflective around you? Cause like I I embraced everything. Cause my pops embraced everything. Like I never heard him like, oh, we don't fuck with that. That's East Coast. So it never sunk to me. Like was that the surrounding? No, like so bro, we mom, don't fuck with the West Coast music. No, no, it wasn't even that. It wasn't that I didn't like it. It was West Coast. It just it was different. just was different, Honestly, right? It was, yep. it was just different. I didn't even. <laughs> Nope. Didn't <laughs> right, me, right. And when I got older, I was like, no, E-40 is a staple. Like, this E-40 is, somebody is a that cultural could, icon. And that's why I asked you, because I really don't know, but I was wondering from your from your lens, yeah. right? Like, how was that direct impact? Did you even, was you even able to notice it? For certain, for certain, like I said, as a kid, no, but as a kid, you still knew that E-40 was a cultural icon. Mm-hmm. Like, we... Everyone knows who E-40 is. It's still a rare sight. And if you see E-40, you happy. You feel me? Like, that's that's still a rare thing. So, definitely, his impact is uh, gigantic. Like I said, a cultural icon. There's not too many rappers that made it to a level where the whole world knows him. I don't. I haven't met too many people who don't know E-40 no, is, no matter where you are. You feel me? And that itself, to come out of Aleo, is a gigantic achievement. So... When E40 knows who you are. Yeah. Come on. Legendary. Come on. Legendary, man. <laughs> right? Fuck? Heartwarming. <laughs> when you first get to even know that he knows who you are. Because y'all even got a song. Like, before, before, even before that. Yep. When you just know that, it's a possibility, but he know who you are. Like, tell me the first time you found that out. Man, I think he DM'd me or he commented on something and then he DM'd me and was like, Man, I don't want I just wanna show love and it was like, yeah, Bro, this is wow. Um I don't flip out too much of of do I don't think so. I don't flip out too much off of any anything that much you feel me but it was a moment because it's like bro i listened to 40 when i was in a car seat so like i mean too short came to my house you feel me i've been listening to too short since i was a kid so it's like nah i I don't but my mom did you (laughs) feel me mom did (laughs) but it was just it's just to me it's just like the I, i those are moments where it's like man bro i really did my i did my work you feel me i'm getting the result of my action when the last time you had to measure, like, when the last time you saw something and it was like, oh, no, like, I'm really on a different level. And what was it? Huh. Shit, today, probably, we just did EYL, man. Wait, what? We just came from Earn Your Leisure, man, from Vallejo. Like, that's a first. It's not the same. Look at my nigga face. Like, yeah, yeah, it's levels, man. Yeah, so, I mean, today was, today felt like a cha- interview and the first performance ever on their platform, man. Today felt like a championship game for certain. I'm, you see my eyes, I'm like, you ain't yeah, come on, yeah. Come on, like, I don't know where you're yeah, yeah, that was that's legendary, man. Yeah, incredible, yeah, incredible. <laughs> now nah, it's one of those we all got it. We all was it, yeah. you know, that's Damn. championship game energy. But yeah, I mean, you know, in Breakfast Club, I came out of Breakfast Club. I, ah, you feel so me? We were on the sidewalk in New York. Them, yeah, you came but it, that energy is active. Yeah, definitely. It just it, it depends on the magnitude. But we've had a few moments that was like, bruh, this is crazy. I don't know if you can relate. You're a priest. You're a, you're a, you're a man. You're a, you're a guy like I am. Remember we was a kid, and it was that one drink that was fire, and, and like you probably did what y'all did. You went to the bathroom, you go, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, like, hang the jersey <laughs> up, nigga. You go to the bathroom, you like, I'm that nigga. Like, uh, you right, me know. You on that God, on go God. Ahead. No, I'm gonna let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you know, nigga, I'll work for this. you going to know. <laughs> Yo, so, dad, that's major. Who you think was the, did you ever, were you ever surprised by any of it? Like, before EYL was, who was, who was the last person before EYL? He was like, damn. They know who I am. Yeah. Diddy, I mean, Diddy called me on Facetime, and Diddy, it was like, on, right? That was that was a nigga. I had to, I had to hold on. You feel me? That was one of them moments where it was like, bro, this shit real, right? This shit real. Mm, mm, mm. And, it, and it's, isn't it like confirmation? I don't know if you believe in like God or anything, but it's like confirmation. It's like 
That shit is real. Man, bro, it's a result of your action. Like I bro, I I took a shovel and I start digging and I got a hole. That's mm-hmm. what comes from it. Like I, I, digging, I know. I Come on, <laughs> kept on digging and struck gold. Nah, this yeah. is the greatest story ever told. No facts, bro. It's it's crazy. I said that cuz like I was really even this for me like I love these conversations because you might not you might not be the most popular artist or person, but it's it feels good to me cuz it's something that I want. Mm. Right, a lot of people I do because I'm I'm building. Just being honest, I'll do like everybody know him. I gotta do this as a look. People right. gonna be like, "Oh my God, you did this person." Right, and the whole time I really ain't care to do that person, but I'm working. You were I can genuinely say like you were one of them people I like. Beautiful man, honor, you know honor for sure. Yo, um, I have some questions. Uh, uh, this is one. When you you Simba is somebody like like that's before I Simba's like your guy. That's my dog. Yeah, I fuck with Simba. Is he? How close are y'all? Cause I see you post him all the time. You um, communicate all the time. We've just recently like really got into noise. So like he comes to the crib and chill. And we chop game and man, just uh, it's just always love, just admiration. I just met Simba this year, but just like, bro, we've we've had to do the same grind. We've had to go through the same shit. Uh, he admires what I've built. I know how long he been at this shit to get where he is. So it's just like. That's just my dog. Isn't it crazy how the universe puts you around the people that needs that you need to be around? I say that because like we all see similar freestyles and going crazy, mm-hmm. but it's like it's it's kind of like y'all cut from the same cloth almost. Yeah. But isn't it crazy that you would be placed around? Of course, of course, laws of attraction, bro. So I asked that first because I wanted to go into this Russ. You got a situation with Russ. Yep. Right. You um uh, one project deal. Yep. Fifty fifty. Yep. He know his is, shit. Is it, is, <laughs> is it that, but that's like law of attraction because if Russ has got to be like right now in an hour ever, number one independent artist ever in an hour ever. Definitely. That, like, definitely. That's cr- It's not too many. That's special. Yeah. So when when he reaches out to you, mm-hmm. how, how does that happen? Russ first hit me, uh, the freestyle went viral on TikTok and he caught 2021 freestyle. Okay. And he caught wind, and he tapped in and was like, yo, this shit is sick. And just from that point, he was just really showing love. Like, he, he sees what we building, and he's like, bro, this shit is crazy, and we've got to speak. So he heard how my mind works and shit, and, and it just like, he's like, bro, I want to help. You feel me? Do you see yourself going further than the one project was just one step at a time? Uh yeah, I don't be looking that far ahead, you know. Uh, I'm a firm believer in if you do something great once, then you get a chance to do it twice. If you do mm-hmm. something great twice, you get a chance to do it three times. If you don't do it great once, you may never, you know, get to do it again. So that's just what it is. We go one step at a time. So how do you how do you seize those moments? How do you seize the opportunities? I just do what I do best, and I uh, hope that the people on the other end do what they do best because it's like I don't want anybody that wants to do everything. I just want the people that do what they do exceptional to do what they do exceptional, that's right? That's what I say all the time. I literally, people say it can only be one Jordan, and me personally, I don't believe that. Right. Because <laughs> if a nigga work the camera, that's a team in itself. You could be Jordan mm-hmm. off the camera. If right. you do beats, you could be Jordan right. off the beats. If I'm on camera, I could be. We all can be Jordan in this motherfucker. It could right. be a bunch of Jordan memes. And you can have a team full of Jordans, right? If everybody do it, they do exceptional. Not what you do to just get by, but the shit that you do that your heart is in, that you're going to do 10,000 times, you can't lose. Mm. How are we going to lose a game? <laughs> you can't. Yo. You can't. What's so special about you? Well, so many things. But one of the things that's so special about you, and I think it's so similar for me, is GC, right? Good, good company. Yeah. So, right? um, you talk about how, like, we did that because, I mean, we really had no choice. Niggas wasn't fucking with us. Right. We had no choice, right? <laughs> right. Talk about those times when, like, you don't see the special, the specialness that's coming from it, but it's so much special, special specialness in it, right? Like, I, um, tell me about those times. Man, I've just I was just always working, you know. I never uh for a long time I wasn't looking back, you know. They uh there's this quote that I had read that uh they were saying like, you know, when you work in a plow in a field, like you don't benefit from looking back. You got to look ahead. You know, if you look back, you might be disheartened cuz either you didn't do as much as you thought you did or you might be so amazed that you stopped going forward. So, for a long time I was just working. I wasn't even looking at what was being built. And we was just putting putting them shovels in the dirt, and we got here from it. 
now, but now that you're here, right, and you still going forward, you don't ever pause and just be like, damn, we working. how far we came. I do very seldom, but I do get those moments seeing like walking out of EYL, you know, we was in a truck like, bro, you know, Tope, I just met Tope last year. We got five albums in the span of a year. We've done a whole lot of shit. And, you know, we had those moments last night when we were like, thank you. We had those moments of just like, bro, this shit crazy. I'm from Valet. I'm a little nigga from the V, bro, you know, and, and to get to these heights and be on EYL and things like that. Even be here. Like, bro, I'm all the way in fucking Appreciate Atlanta. Glad, glad you, you feel me? Atlanta. No, for certain. For <laughs> certain. It's deserving, bro. Like, I'm on here because you did work. I wouldn't have came on here if you ain't had no work done already. You feel me? Like, niggas shop at Walmart because somebody built Walmart. If you ain't do the work, we ain't coming. If it don't exist, we ain't coming. Can we talk, though? I, sorry, I know we was... But can we talk, now? Come on. <laughs> Independent. Before you do that, though. Good. Independent. Yo, you got to go downstairs here. Take yeah, I got to open it. I got somebody. I got to open the door. Yeah, nah, I got somebody down here. Hey, call him. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Okay. Independent. Come on. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can we clap for that? We got people here. Come Fuck on, man. Live audience. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yo, I don't think niggas understand how hard it is. Right? Like, and not even before that. So I've been seeing this shit on Instagram. Oh, I, I was looking at shit interviews. And what I said, I said, oh, my God. God, I can talk to him. Like, this is me. I said, I'm like, bro, this is me. Like, that, I can. That's beautiful. <laughs> so, somebody, and I'm gonna ask you first. Somebody was talking about um, hold up, hold up. Mm. Somebody was talking about uh, how you can charge for your last name just like Gucci can charge for that last name. Mm-hmm. And before I say my opinion, I'm just ask. Because he was just saying, like, people are scared to, to charge their price. Like, Gucci is just a name. Uh, uh, they were saying, they was naming all the, uh, the Rockefellers. They were like, all these are last names. Mm. And just like they charge for their name, you can charge for yours. People just scared. Well, they're not just charging for their name. Come on, I'm about That's to leave. a misconception. Come on, I'm about to leave. They're not, like, you're, you're paying for Disneyland because there's a whole fucking Disneyland. Not because his name's Disney. Like, bro, he put his name on a product that is substantial. You feel me? It's not just their last name. Otherwise, anybody will fucking do it. You and have to build something it. substantial. Oh like, bro, John Walton, like, Walmart is a thing. That, 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 that's where that comes from. You feel me? It's crazy because people, I hear people, like, with these think pieces on social media. And I be like, no. It ain't just, he not, he just, he didn't just put a horse on a shirt and said it's polo. He didn't do, like, no, we're not, no, no, he did do that, but we're not paying the no, price that we paid because paying, he did that. We're paying for the fact that that man got mass production going in facilities to send out a million polos to a bunch of different retail stores. Like, there's work behind the name. And like you said, he, he the fact that, not, I was talking to my guy, shout out to King Crap, I give you the, 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 uh, the, the promo, fuck it. He was saying, yo, my shit is lit now, but what you don't see is I had to serve a thousand people when it was just me. Right. So you know what that mean? And when he broke it down, he is killed because he do seafood. Shout out King Crab, ATO, make sure y'all check it out, right? He was like, bro, when I had to serve a thousand people, you know what I mean? I had to get a thousand plates, mm-hmm. fill them up with a thousand crab legs, a mm-hmm. thousand uh, eggs, a thousand this, a thousand that. I mean, guess what? It was a thousand people thirsty. So I had to get a thousand cups, fill them up with a thousand different drinks. Right. That's what you pay for. Yeah, you you're paying, you, you paying for expertise. It's like electricians and shit that have like very high rates of pay. And people like, well, they was only here 30 minutes to do this job. Like, bro, that nigga worked 10 years to be able to do that job in 15 minutes. That's why the rate is high. You feel me? Like, you're paying for the expertise. But that's the thing. People misconstrue price with the value of mm. something. Nigga, go hire an electrician who just started. And see the difference, you feel me? That's why it's rate layer, you feel me? Like, yeah, the value of what you're getting is not the same as the price you're paying. Mark, um, I had a, got a small check. Well, it was cool for me. I had got a check through Zelle while I was asleep, right? And my girl was like... That's beautiful. My girl was like, you can't complain. You just got paid in your sleep. <laughs> I said, nah, that took 10 years to do. That, that wasn't just from yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, I might have talked to that person yesterday, but that was 10 years of work that had to get put in a beat in this position to do that. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's crazy because I understand. You was complaining about free money? No, I'm saying she was, mm-hmm. I was saying like, I said <laughs> something that she was like, you can't say. I was talking about some bill or something. She's like, you just got paid, at least you got paid in your sleep. I'm like, right. nah, babe. That was, I put in work for that. While I was awake. 
Yo, right. How do you, how do you measure? While I was awake. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting paid in my sleep because all the work I did while I was awake. Mm. Yeah. How, how are you measuring your value? And how do you not get in your own way? Because sometimes you can think you're more valuable than the people see or even than you actually are at that present moment. I don't think you could ever think you're more valuable than you are. You're as valuable as you think you are. Mm. As simple as that. How do you measure that when the other people don't see it just yet? Um... I never have to, you feel me? Like, uh, I never had to. My value isn't really based on what the people think it is until it's a position for them to make an offer. And I know that that's based on how they see me and not how I see me. You feel me? Like, I, I know what I built. I understand what I built. So I don't really like some things come my way and it's an easy thing to walk away from because it's like, well, no, I spent 10 years building this. This just doesn't make sense. You feel me? It's not really a tough thing to have to equate when you know what you've done and the work you've done like it's only hard to determine your value when you've been given shit and you don't know what you really worth like you know if you get signed and a nigga drop you off at the top of the mountain you don't know what that climb was like so it's kind of difficult for you to be like ah well i don't know if i'm worth this or that because you didn't have to work for it so in those what i mean i guess in those situations when deals are presented right and somebody one would say a hundred percent of something is better. One percent of something is better than a hundred percent of nothing. So if somebody is bringing a deal to your table, right? Being independent, and it's more than what you had. It's more than what you got. But it ain't. It won't be more than what would be if you continue mm -hmm. to go X, X Y Z amount of time. Yeah. How do you make those decisions? Um. I usually base those decisions more so on the people and the infrastructure versus the money, mm. right? Because you can get money from a lot of places, but you can't get good people from a lot of places. Mm. So I'd rather have less money with a great group of people than have more money with people that I don't really fuck with. Mm. I had to mm. let that sit. Inside yeah, so let it like simmer. It. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be a TikTok clip. Come on, easy. <laughs> oh, we got a few. We got a few. Viral. That's cool. Come on. Yo, it's crazy, bro. So, like, right now, if you had to say where you were in your present moment, where where would you say? What would you say, What would you name this chapter of your career or your life? Um, Mount Everest. Why? That's where I feel like we are. I just feel like we at um I feel like I'm at the height of 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 what I do. I feel like I'm 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 creating new things in in this space and in this world that haven't existed and I've just I've climbed. <laughs> no, I was saying to be careful. Oh my fault. Yeah, it's good. It's I want to get out. You feel I like me? I've just I've just been on a climb, on a crazy climb, bro, and it's um man. So if this is no average what's next? I think that uh I don't I don't often I don't even often worry about like what's next, bro. I just be I get that shovel every day and I go dig and my hole keeps getting deeper and bigger and like I say I just kind of I'm always okay with being wherever my actions have led me. Mm. Mm. And I think I think we talked I think that was good enough, man. Man, like you had to, this was a good one, man. <laughs> Come on, clap like, it up for him. This was a good one. Nah, yeah. Like I said, man, I definitely I appreciate what you're doing. And I think you was having a conversation about radio and how they don't really understand uh, the museum. Shout out to them in D.C. Shout out um, the museum, man. I saw you doing your thing with him. I saw, I saw you rocking. Yeah. Right now, you know what I'm saying? You be, doing, you be putting on for the people. Come on, man. We showing love. We outside. Speaking of showing love, I, I we were talking about the radio, and I used to work for the radio as well, and how they they promote that it's not payola, but it really is payola. Nigga, it's payola. But it's only payola when it makes sense for them. <laughs> because if you had the same bag that, let's say, little baby had, mm -hmm. do you think you would get the same push? No, because I'm not little baby. Exactly. It's not. It's not about the bag. It's about the bag as well as the product. Mm. Nigga, if you ain't got good dope, it ain't gonna sell. It don't matter how much money you put behind it. No, that's no. That's whack. I fuck. I'm sorry. Not what you're saying, but that that saying I think is whack because you do have good dope, mm. right? But it ain't what they deem as good dope. 
Yeah. And yeah. that's the bullshit. Politic. Now. Politic. I mean, you can only buy your way into so much, but that's the thing where you can't be reliant on infrastructure built by people that aren't you. These aren't our people. Nigga, we don't own them stations. You, like, you relying on somebody that took everything from you to give you everything back. That's crazy. But how do we... That's true. <laughs> that's, that's true, but... I mean, well, no, 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 because... um, Hey, yeah. Fuck, I might just be fucked. Come on, give but it to him. Radio 1. That's not owned by a white person. Kathy Hughes is black. Mm. But it's still a company that makes money, mm-hmm. right? Shit, we here, fuck it. Yeah. I'm in fraternity, right? Come on. Black fraternity. I came out HBCU, Morgan State University. I'm an Omega Psi 5 fraternity. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, but what gosh. happened is when I got I got in trouble and I understood that this is an organization first. Mm-hmm. This is a business first. I came into it wanting it to be a brotherhood, which it can be if you choose it to be. Mm-hmm. But at the core, at the crux of the matter, it's a business. I say that to say, at the end of the day, people want to do things that make their business work. And mm-hmm. if they don't, fi- and if they don't think that you're valuable enough, even no, no shade, but it's 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 documented already, like the innovators, right? Mm-hmm. Because you wasn't valuable enough to bring me direct paper or direct things that I can see now. I'm a pass. Right. Oh, but don't I make you regret it on the back end? Right. And that's the thing. I mean, you just gotta like those are man. We had a situation. Um, you know, a station. You know. Hovain put somebody on early and it was like, oh yeah, he dope, but the numbers ain't there. And it's like, those two things don't even coincide. You gon' So you gonna hint it, like the numbers would be there if you would've helped, but you chose not to help because it wasn't there, so now we not fucking with you ever. ever. You feel me? But that's just, bro, that's how this whole industry kind of works and operate, and that's why you really have to build your own infrastructure, because as long as you relying on they shit, you gonna be feeling away. Your whole, like, you gonna be feeling away. <laughs> shit, I don't give a fuck. I, I'm in a relationship now, and my girl, she she does me so well. She teaches me how to be okay with feeling. Beautiful. And, 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 and feel how you want to feel. So fuck y'all niggas. I'm going to feel this shit. Beautiful. And guess what? At the end of the day, them feelings, <laughs> oh, they help me. I'm not, like I said earlier, I'd be lying if I if I said I didn't hold on to them feelings. Mm-hmm. Ooh, because right. I'd be like, you motherfuckers going to remember. Right. Oh, my God. Not saying I'm doing it for them, but. Right. But see, and that's the thing, like, when you holding on to shit, it only hurt the nigga holding on to it, bro. It's only weighing you down. It don't weigh nobody else down. I mean, I don't give a fuck. It's going to put you, it's going to be the fuel to, it's going to be the fuel to my motherfucking rocket ship, nigga. Right. You got to <laughs> use it as it, right? <laughs> convert it. Convert it. Yo, it's crazy because you, you talked about Hovang. I thought we was going to be done, but it's so much. Talked about Hovang. Did he have a connection with uh, Johnny Shipes? Johnny Shipes connected me with Hovang. So one that. night, uh, Johnny Sipes had called me and was like, bro, I want to fly you out. I want you to come fuck with Cinematic. And when I went out there, I met Hovain and a bunch of other niggas that was kind of operating with Cinematic. And then, yeah, that's how we linked up. Johnny Sipes is a power player in a lot of niggas' careers. They don't even understand. So shout out to the white man. <laughs> shout out to that white, that weak <laughs> white man. <Yeah. laughs> fuck with his donuts, man. Come on. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because a lot of people don't know Look, look at you, bro. Do you, do you see the dots we connected? We, I just don't want niggas to miss the, 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 the skip the jewels, the gem that we got. Like, Come on. I don't want to say the name, but niggas don't understand what I mean. I feel like a lot of niggas looked over the gem that we lost. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for certain. Nipsey Hussle. Right. I feel like a lot of people miss that gem right. until he left, when he left. And it's like I'm talking to you and I see that in... That, that independent like that like everything you talk about and then it's crazy again we talk about that universe right Johnny Shanks is one of the first people that mm-hmm. helped cultivate Nipsey Hussle definitely right you need to, niggas need to listen to me I don't know yeah but it's crazy how that same person helped man get you right role. same path same roles same roles bro and that was one of the things that I that's one of the reasons I took that trip because like in my mind I said bro Nipsey trusted this nigga I'm a, I'm a trust him I'm gonna I'm a rock with him and see you feel me and make my own determination but yeah Shipes has had his hand in a lot of great shit Mick Jenkins Joey Badass uh, Big Crit mm-hmm. yeah he was working with my guy uh, the lo-fi uh, guys uh, they from out of Baltimore you probably don't know them but he was working with them they even Shit, whole vein been 
Hovain fuck with Sight stuff. Like, yeah, with the management. Hovain, Hovain had his hand in a lot a of lot shit, of too. Yeah. I had interviewed him. He's a, a Dope. Gym. That's beautiful. Yeah. He's a gym. Yep. Like, that's crazy. What What do you... You dropped six albums in, it, in a year already. Well, that's like, what, one every two months or something like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, think, I, I feel think, like I think this year we might top that. You talk about how artists be, like, holding on to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how niggas... Like, bro, you might as well just write. Like, you said when, when, when you die, you want to go in. Yeah. Because holding on to things really just doing yourself a disservice and the people around you. Completely. Right? Do you think that's just a noun thing because you ain't a superstar? I think I'm a superstar. Mm, I fuck with that. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, so... Let's let's can we like, let's be real. Like, what what are you striving for, right? Like like it's something. It's a it's a, what's the top level for you in this artistry shit? Uh, I don't know, bro. It's one of those things that's like deeply rooted in you. You ever do some shit and you don't understand why? You just kind of on like a divine mission. Like I said, I don't really have uh, too many things that I'm like this needs to be done. I just like I can't stop. Okay. You feel me? I just can't stop. I keep thinking of new shit, new innovation, new ideas. I just can't stop. So having that being said, you ain't the biggest rapper in the world yet. Nah. Right? So because you ain't that, do you think when you become that, you think you'll do the music differently? You Or you think you're still going to drop the music like... I think it depends on how much music I'm creating and what space I'm in. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing music forever, but if I am, I'll probably be dropping it like this because I don't, I don't like to hold things. Like, mm. like you know, I like things to be fresh. I, I just like to give it while it's here. Like I said, I do want to leave empty. So as long as I'm making it, that shit gonna be coming out. So would you ever? One of my favorite artists before, like a while ago, was um, cause you know they changed. Was the weekend? Right. Yeah. House of Balloons. Um. Echoes of Silence. Man, that was a time. It was a time, right? That was a time. But he. So I remember at times I was putting people on with mm -hmm. him. Right. I would put them like, the weekend, the weekend, the weekend. But when he got on, I put air quotes because when he got on, I guess his team said he should drop that again because he was so dope. Those projects. Mm -hmm. the, and trilogy. the trilogy. Right. And I was wondering, your shit is really dope, mm -hmm. but it's the world ain't get it yet. Not the mm -hmm. entire world. I was wondering if you ever had that major or you got to a level where you were so big, would you redrop it again, kind of similar to that? So I don't, I wouldn't redrop, but what we do is like, like we have songs going viral from two, three years ago because I never stopped making content for my songs. Mm. I still make content to my first album tracks. Like I still rehearse those songs. We still get videos. So I never stopped promoting nothing that I dropped ever so i don't really have to re-release the song because people just go back naturally they think it's new music when they see the content mm. so baggage we, claim came out last year in like august or september no, I, I that you. shit is bigger than it's ever been today and it's a year later and that's because we keep pushing it like that's just how this shit go marlon seven song gt coop came out august yeah, that shit going viral today because we did piano bird. We keep doing it. I never stopped making content to these songs. Songs are forever. Ain't it? Ain't no such thing as old music. No, you do make that like timeless music, and that's what I fuck with. It. I think I got. I had in my old phone. I had a uh, note list of like captions all the year. And I was, yeah. Like, I, was, I was wondering like, would you be upset if I if I did the no? Captions? Do your Dougie, you man. That's what we. You don't even gotta tag me, man. I know where it came from. <laughs> said, you don't talk like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> I know where it came from. It's crazy because, like, like, so it's funny. Like, I always like two people. I feel like party on party some fourteen. I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, I fuck with party. Party is like my like. If I had to have my alter ego, like somebody he talks some crazy shit. Like that. Mm -hmm, right. And I feel like you are like the 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 person in my soul that I just can't get the words, but I be thinking it. Like, so when you say something, I'm like, bro, that's how the fuck I that's feel. That's exactly right? it, right? I swear to God, like these niggas don't understand, man. Fact, like, fact. you feel me? Like, I think what you said, um, damn. I don't know if y'all do this where I'm from. I mean, where you from? But where I'm from, they, they call niggas like dick riders. But I don't give a fuck because I really, I, I like Man, so it's love. Really, yeah, so I remember you said, uh, what the, I think it was on the freestyle too. You was like, um, what the fuck you say? It was like, uh, I ain't trying to flex. I'm really trying to inspire some niggas. I'm not the boss. I'm the owner. I could hire some niggas. You said that shit. I was like, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, LA Lakers. Come yeah, on, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the like, boss. No, I'm the owner. I can hire some niggas. Bro, come on, man. Like, when you said, but I, I said it because every time I come on my podcast, I tell niggas all the time, like, 
I just want to inspire. I want, like I said, my the purpose of it is what makes you human. Mm -hmm. I want your story to inspire somebody. I was like, damn, it ain't nothing that we never heard before. Right. But it's from somebody that I really fuck with or I, or I look up to. Bro. That's inspiration. And everybody speak everybody delivers shit different. Like I just um the past few years I got really into uh Sad Guru. He's an Indian mystic. And um he teaches just like life lessons, but he says it in ways that are just like I've never heard it, so I'm able to consume it differently. Like he teaches life in a way that a five year old could understand it and it's easier to consume. So when you find people that's why we love hip hop, because mm -hmm. we found artists that could just say what we haven't been able to express in ways that we didn't understand how to get it out. You feel mm -hmm. me? That's just all it is. And when you find someone that can say everything you feeling, that's that's your God. Mm -hmm. And you know what's crazy? I know we've been going deep, but like it's the same way with like your person. Like you're in a relationship or even like friends. Right. Sometimes people have the best interest, but they don't, they, you can't hear it in a way that is best for you or they can't articulate it in a way for, for you to understand. Yeah. You know, clash. Just because you sent it don't mean it was received. Mm. That's crazy. That's yeah. Crazy. That's another clip, right? Come on. Yeah. Yo, what's up? Um, <laughs> I swear, we got to leave. We got to leave. We got to leave, bro. I, this is going to be hard. I ain't going to ask you top five rappers or nothing like that. Give me your top five lines, one line, or not one line, but like bars. Top five. Um, man, Lloyd Banks got one. That nigga said, uh, she in the back blowing on me like a Nintendo cartridge. And I just, like, that was such a nostalgia. That, <laughs> nigga, I remember being a kid, right? Um, what else is it, right? That was one of them. Um, uh, Lil Wayne, of course, uh, better wear latex because you don't want that latex. latex. Like, oh, I think that's I'm latex. latex. That's that was a that was one of them. Man, that, was cool, bro. Um, that, was, that was a good one. Man, what else? Right, right. The sheesh. Um, what he say? Andre three thousand said wetness all around me, but I'm no island peninsula, maybe. <laughs> that's a different level. That's a different level of that's, rap, right? That's, crazy. that's a different. I'm a, I'm gonna end on them three because that was that was that's a different okay. level of rap. You ain't give me no West Coast. So that was great. I like. That. I might incorporate. That, that, I might incorporate. That. Right. That's a but good. I wasn't set. talking. That's a good but I wasn't set. talking about them. Hmm. I was talking about you. You on mine? Top five. Ooh. You got so Boy, deep. that's deep. You got I, I, I chop my arm off before I take these niggas' hand. <laughs> uh, man, I got it's endless I on need, this I end. Need four more. It's endless on this end. Sheesh. Uh, in, in, in the end, I had a garlic naan with the curry. Niggas don't even understand uh, that one. Down. In the end, I had a garlic oh, naan nah. with the curry. <laughs> 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 he got paused. Hey, like, what I say, uh, huh? Uh, it's so many. My mind is like, yeah. That GC freestyle was crazy at the, the radio station. The, the guy was like, I've never been on TV before. What like, I say? Charged like an eon. My brother's going to infinity and beyond. Fighting temptation like I'm Leon. Mm. Huh. That was hard. Huh. <laughs> that was hard. Uh. Two more. The, the Leakers was called too though. The, the Leakers pie, the, has some the, one. The, 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 the pie. Yeah. Oh my God. Put the pie <laughs> with my niggas. Put the pie with the fans. Put the pie with my pop. Still had pie in the fans. Shit, I would give you five, but I got pie on my. Yeah. That was different. That was crazy. Um, you said something about um. You was like something about niggas goals to million. That's not even my goal anymore. Some shit like that. Yeah. What was that? Right, that's my old goal. That was one. Uh, look at what it come to. No escape. Who can I run to? Navigating life like I'm Sun Tzu. No escape. Who can I run to? Navigating life like I'm Sun Tzu. I'm going to give it the... There's so many. <laughs> there's so many. When you yeah. make these songs, do you look back and be like, what the fuck? 
I don't know man, you. while I'm writing, I be like, you know, hyped in. But it's always new shit coming through. Like, man, they be in the sessions. Like, my whole writing, I'm just like, I'm excited. You feel me? Like, I, I'm excited. It's like when you having a great game, bro. Like, you know, when Curry be out there and the niggas start shimmying, it's hey, like, bro, we getting we getting to it. There's no way. Even if I wish I could talk to Curry, I wish it both of y'all could be here. It's <laughs> no, because I feel like LeBron <laughs> is the, I'm going to say it. Don't hate me for this, but fuck y'all niggas. What the love? What the love? I'm going to I feel like LeBron the only nigga that show his emotions for real. That show he human. Huh. Like y'all niggas keep playing with me. Like you feel me? I feel like he the one of the only ones that really show niggas. That's hilarious. So you telling me you don't be writing these shit? So you be like, yo, nah, bro. These niggas need to gain my respect. You don't never be like that. I do. I do. I do, like, <laughs> right? I do it in the booth. Right. I do it in the booth. Niggas stop playing with me. When you hear them boys stop playing with me. That's what that is. Like we we know what time this is, bro. It hasn't hip hop hasn't hasn't sounded like this in a long time, but bro. You know These what niggas else? can't rap. Ain't you know what else though? I think a part of it. Don't hate me, bro. I'm just a messenger. I feel like well, hip hop don't look like you yet. Right. Mm -hmm. When you when I see you, you happy. Right. These niggas out here struggling. Niggas got a million dollars and still struggling. So what that right. tell you about money? Right. Right. Oh man, niggas money don't rich. do it. Money it's don't do hurting. it. It's still hurting. Right. You see a nigga like you, you smiling, shows sold out by yourself. You're like, come on, you, come on, come man. Come on. You feel me? You want to, like, you want to grab happy. Yeah. You, we here, like you said, man, shit happened. Thank you. Come on. Niggas not used to that. It's so they, new. They can't, they can't accept it yet. Right. I think that's what it, like, because, bro, it's, bro, there's no way, bro. I look at shit like, nah. It don't <laughs> make sense. I hear the other songs, like, it just don't make sense. Right, it don't make sense. Right. I'm gonna let you go, bro. Yeah. Come on. The Russell, bro, let everybody know how to. Uh, I got one English. question for you, though, bro. Dude, what's what, up, bro? Um, what made you, what, what gave you the, um, the thought process of doing the residency in the backyard? Man, so, bro, we had did a show. Uh, Can you a, repeat what he said? People not gonna hear him. He asked, uh, what was the thought process about doing the residency in the backyard? So, uh, we had a show. And prior to the show, like the day before, damn that day, uh, I think it was like that morning, the owner of the venue called and was like, uh, just start giving me hella stipulations and shit that I need to abide by. And then before he, he was like, I don't even know if we're going to make money because I do proud to pay shows. And I was like, I hung up the phone because it's like, bro, I don't need no, I'm not trying to do business with nobody who got doubts about what I'm doing and building. But the show ended up being successful and he ended up hitting me like, yo, can we do another? Can we run it back? And it's like, bro, it just it just turned me off to where like I, I never want to be in a position where another nigga could shut me down and give me stipulations on what I can and can't do with my art and my people that paid to see me. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it was like we got to build our own. So we ain't got to go ask. But that's like you said, the thank you, right? Because thank you. It's, it's the thank, thank you. you. Because guess what? Like like me, I said what you're saying, bro. I got fired from radio stations. I got kicked, like, multiple radio stations. Mm. But it showed me this. Thank you. Thank you, right? Yeah. Niggas wasn't putting you on the radio. But it showed you GC, right? Thank you. We're going to make our own. Ooh, yeah, man, I did. Right. <laughs> Come on, Russell, man. Tell the people where to follow you all that. Come man. on, I'm at Russell on everything. Good company. Company spelled C O M P E N N Y. We everywhere. Global. Mr. J Hill. It's a wrap. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that was fire.